Nowadays, the demand of making videos and video animations is higher than ever before. Fortunately, as filmmakers slash photographers, we can learn how to do so. If you would like to grow your business and offer new services, or you just simply want to learn something new, in today's tutorial I'd like to show you how you can easily animate your photos using DaVinci Resolve Fusion tab. If you have never used DaVinci Resolve's Fusion, no worries, I'm going to take you step by step within this tutorial. As you saw in the beginning of the video, there are a few things that you would need to do first. You would need to put your camera on a tripod to make a steady position and then you would need to make a picture of the place which will be your background without the object that you would like to be moving in your animation. Then you would need to make the same picture but with that object placed on your background. Now that you have two pictures, the next step would be to cut out the object that you would like to animate. I like to keep things simple, therefore I used Photoshop to cut out my object and then I exported it as a PNG to have a transparent background. But you can do the same using DaVinci Resolve Color tab and here you can check my tutorial how to use masking in DaVinci Resolve Color tab. And now it is finally time to export your background and your object into DaVinci Resolve. Without further ado, let's hop into the editing program. I like short videos and animations on Instagram, therefore we will be editing our animation to 10 second timeline. Therefore we would need to move our cursor here to 10 second mark. Then we can export both of our pictures into the timeline. We need to place our object on top of our background to have it in the foreground. Then we can highlight both of our pictures and stretch it to 10 second mark. But then you can see we have those black borders. So we need again to highlight both of our pictures and zoom in a little bit till those black borders disappear. And now because I deliberately left the orange line in the bottom of my shot, and put those LED lights to green light to make a complementary scene, I would need to move my photos to the top a little bit. Having both of our clips highlighted, we need to right click on them and choose new fusion clip. And now it is time to go to fusion tab, you can find it in the bottom of editing software. And if you cannot see it, you need to go here on the top to the workspace and show page. And here you need to make sure that you have your fusion highlighted. To move everything you see here, you need to hold middle button of your mouse and you can simply drag it around. Here you can see Media In and Media To. If you drag your Media To to the left side of your window, then you will actually see what does it correspond to. Or you can click one or two in your keyboard. If you click two, for example, you will see it on the right side. If you click one, you will see it on the left side. Media Out is the final result you will see in your editing page. Therefore, I like to keep it on the right side as of default. If you drag it to the right side, voila, you will see that. If you have more than one image, then it will be automatically connected to each other using the merge node. Merge node is used to connect things to each other and then to transfer it to final output. If we drag our merge node right here, you can see that it is exactly the same like media out because there is nothing after our merge node. Everything connected to merge node with yellow color is in the background and everything which is connected with a green color is in the foreground. To understand what is media 1 and media 2, you can drag it to the left side, let's say, and as you can see, media 2 in the foreground is our cut which we cut out. I like to keep things clean and organized, therefore I rename every single node and you can click F2 and rename it as a cup. And then this one will definitely be our background, but you can again check it by dragging it to the left side. This is our background, therefore let's rename it click on F2 and rename it to background. Now we will be working only with our cup. I like to keep background on the left side and our foreground on top of our merge. It's just the way I like to have things around. Now if you click on merge node, you can see to the right side on the inspector there are a few things that you can change. Everything you do to the merge node will affect only those things which are connected to the foreground of the merge node. Therefore, if I change the center position, you can see it affects only our cup. 
Therefore, let's now move to the first frame of our fusion composition and click a keyframe here in the center because we will be moving our cup from left to right. And then we will go, let's say, to frame 35 and we will move our cup to the desired position. It's up to you where are you going to move it. I can see that there are a few things on the table which I don't want to interfere with. I don't want them to disappear, therefore I will move my cup to this position. If we go now to the beginning and hit play, you can see that our animation has begun. As you saw in the beginning of this tutorial, now this is time to add an actual text to our animation. To do so, we can drag text plus node into our timeline right here. All of those nodes has its own output. And we need to connect it to our timeline by clicking and dragging this output to the square of our merge node and it will automatically create another merge node which does what? Of course, it connects everything to our timeline. I like to make things simple, therefore I allow DaVinci Resolve to do as much work for me as it is possible, therefore I do not create merges manually. Now let's choose our text and write, for example, drink. Let's change the font, I like to use phosphate. And then to make things even more beautiful, we need to change the color of our text because we have two complementary colors, which is orange and green in our timeline. I like to hit this one and choose, let's say, this green color and hit OK. As you can see, our text is on our LED light, therefore let's move it a little bit down to make it more visible. And now, as you can see, our cup moves in the background of our text because our second merge is after our first merge. If we would change things around, then our cup would move in the foreground of our text. And now it is finally time to animate our text to appear it from the background of our cup. To do so, we would need to mask it out. You would need to drag this polygon mask here to mask it out, you would need to zoom in and to do so, you would need to hold your command or control and then scroll on your mouse wheel. And now you can start masking out your cup, nice and easy. You don't need to mask everything out because our text lies only within this part. Therefore, to make it simple, I would move it around with my middle mouse and finish my masking like this. The next thing would be to connect our polygon output to our mask effect to of our merge. If you connect this polygon to this merge, this polygon will affect anything which is connected in the foreground of your merge node. Therefore, let's take polygon output and connect it to the masking effect of the merge node. And as you can see, nothing has changed because we need to invert our mask. There are two ways how you can do that. You can either choose your polygon mask and invert it, or you can go to a merge node and here you can apply mask inverted. I like to use it in the polygon mask, therefore I will invert it here. And because we stay on the first frame, we would need to make a keyframe right here. And then we move to frame 35 because our cup moves to frame 35 and we would need to change our center position to frame 35 like this. Now we need to check that this mask stays correctly within the movement. Therefore, if I move our cup to the left, you can see everything stays fine. And to make things more beautiful, let's soften the edge of our mask, but just a little bit. Now if you go to the first frame, we can hit play and as you can see, the text appeared from the background of our cup. Now I'd like to animate things further. Therefore, I go to frame 35 where our animation ended and select our text. To animate things further, I would like to add this transform node into our timeline. To connect it to our text, we can simply select our text node and then click here on transform node and it will automatically connect it to the timeline. From here, making sure that we are on frame 35, we need to send click keyframe center and then we can move, let's say, to frame 50 and move our text on top a little bit. And from here, you can see that our text goes to frame 35 and then it goes up. And then to make things more beautiful, we can add another text. We need to select our merge node, transform node and text node. 
and then copy it with command C, paste it with command V and in order for us to add it to the timeline we need to have everything selected, hold shift on our keyboard and drag it into the timeline until you see the timeline highlighted like this. From here I would delete this transform node because I simply don't need it for the second text and here we can write let's energize for example. From here we can change the font of our text alike party led and we can change as well color of our text to the second complementary color which is orange. And now if I move to the first frame you can see that our let's energize is here all the time. Therefore we would need to go to frame 35 where our text goes up and from here we would need to animate our second text. In order for it to appear into our video we need to select our merge and here we have our blending mode. Blending mode is the equivalent of opacity in our editing tab. Therefore we would need to put first keyframe on frame 35 making our blend mode to zero and then move to frame 50 where our animation ends at this point and set our blending mode to one again and now let's go to the frame one and hit play as you can see everything appears nicely now and now it is time to make things even better as you can see in our bar stand there everything has its own reflection except of our cup because we cut it out from other scene now it is time to add reflection to our cup let's move to the frame number one and let's copy our cup node paste it here now let's connect our cup node to our timeline and as you can see we have another cup appeared. Now let's add a tra another transform node and we need to change angle to 180 degrees to reverse our cup. And everything we need to do now is to position our cup like it would be a reflection of our actual cup. Let's zoom in a little bit to make things more precise. Let's change the center a little bit now when I'm happy with the position of the cup you can see that it doesn't look that great. Therefore we would need to mask our cup out to have the reflection only on our bus stand. Therefore we would need to drag another polygon mask and from here we can mask things out. Now we can connect our polygon mask to our merge node and we can soften edges a little bit. The next thing we would need to do is go to our merge node which connects our reflection to the, our timeline and we need to change the blending mode to make it subtle. As you can see our cup now has its own reflection. Now it is time to animate our reflection as well because as you can see I move my cup but the reflection stays on place. In order to do so, you can click on the transform node and add another transform node to make things clean. And we can rename our first transform node with F2 as position of our reflection. And the second transform node we can name movement. So we know where everything is. And then we can simply choose our movement node, right click on the center and connect it to path number one and position. As you can see now our reflection moves with a cup. It means that we connected movement of our cup reflection to the movement of our actual cup. In DaVinci Resolve Fusion there are a lot of things that can simplify your workflow. This is one of them, I hope that you enjoy those tips. Now we can simply choose our polygon mask we can right click on the center as well and connect it to the path one as well. And as you can see, now our reflection moves with a cup as easy as it is. Now if you go to frame number one and hit play, everything works just fine. But of course it wouldn't be me if I stopped right here. I would like to add something more into this footage. I use additional service called Storyblocks, therefore I downloaded Smoke Animation from there and I would like to add it to our bar stand. In order for me to do so, I would need to move everything, stretch our media out so I have space with, within the timeline to work with. I need to click here on Media Pool and I need to drag the Smoke Animation in here. Then I would need to connect our Smoke Output to our timeline 
and rename our smoked so I understand that this media is smoke. The next step for us to do is of course to mask it out. Let's drag another polygon. Because at the moment we don't need two windows anymore, we can click here in the viewer and it will simply make everything to one window. And from here we can make an approximate polygon mask as we wish to. Now we connect our polygon mask to our merge node. We soften our edges a lot. And then now you can see that the smoke is on the bottom of our bar stand. I don't want it there, therefore I would need to drag our polygon mask on top a little bit. And when you're happy with the result, you would need to choose your merge node and play with your blending mode to make things more subtle. Of course, to make things look even more beautiful, you would need to play with your polygon mask to make this smoke appear more lifelike. And as a very last thing now, I would like to take you to the DaVinci Resolve's color tab and add some final touches. You can find color tab right here. I would like to add some saturation, then go to our effects, add glow here, change the color filter to our complementary color. I like things to be orange, hit OK, then change our shine threshold to let this effect really pop like this and then we can play with the spread just to make things shine a little bit more and if at any point you think that this is too much you can go to your blending mode and you can make it more subtle and if we switch on and off our node you can see the huge difference it made and now in our editing tab let's hit play and you can see how nice it looks. At this point, this is up to you guys to play with the sound design and add in the logo of the company you work for. I think that this tutorial is full of tips and tricks and a lot of useful information. If you enjoyed it at any point, please leave me a like, comment down below and consider subscribing to my channel for more upcoming content. Please follow me on Instagram and my TikTok. And as always, it is a pleasure serving you guys and until next time, nashledanam!